right, any questions for fifth year free safety Malik Antoine, please use the raise hand function in the participants tab. We'll start with RJ Abadia from the bootleg. Hey Malik, I think the last time we talked, we talked about communication and kind of getting in sync in the secondary. Um, just curious about an update on that in the in the in the ground since then, in the time since then. How in sync do you guys feel as a unit, and what are kind of the challenges that Oregon presents to a secondary based on what you saw from last year? I think that over this past uh, few weeks that we had to get prepared for this game, we've, we've done a great job in just getting ready and uh, communicating, and just making sure everybody's on one page. I think the, the hardest thing about coming into a new year is when guys leave and we kind of replace guys is getting everybody on one accord. But I think this preparation period uh, at practice and just constant film study with each, and each of these guys, we've been able to lock in and just be on one accord. So I'm excited to see us uh, go out there and communicate and come together as one unit. As far as Oregon, you know, obviously they, they they always have a lot of flashy, speedy guys. So that's that's one thing on our radar. But being that the fact that they got a new OC, um, we kind of know what to expect. We're kind of looking at uh, things from Mississippi State, but also prepared to see see their same offers from last year. So going into week one, we kind of just want to play our defense, execute, and see what they bring at, bring at us and be ready to adjust on the fly. And then just a quick follow up, how would you grade the tackling at this point? I know it was a major point of emphasis all through camp. Well, we got a, we got a lot of we got a we got a few times to to get some tackling on tape uh, over this past over this past training training cap period. So, I'm excited about it. You know, guys have done well, tackled well, been physical at practice. So, I'm excited to, I'm excited to see a show on Saturday. Our next question will come from Rusty Simmons with the San Francisco Chronicle. Go ahead, Rusty. Malik, I was going to ask you, uh, football first, Coach Anderson talked about you being able to coach up pretty much every position in the secondary and beyond. Uh, what does that mean to you to hear those kind of things? And and is that part of, I know it's probably a long way off, but is that part of your future? Uh, that means a lot coming from Coach Anderson. You know, I spend count, countless time just getting in the playbook and making sure I know um, where, where my role, but also everyone's role. So if somebody doesn't know know their spot, I can be able to, to put them in the right spot. So, cause I take a lot of pride in, in, in just the knowledge and, and being a student of the game. So that means a lot coming from him to, to say those words. I don't know quite what my future holds as far as coaching yet, but um, right now I'm just happy to to be one of those guys in the field to, to be able to fix guys when they're wrong, be able to communicate and be able to know the defense uh, so well. And big picture, I know you're dialed into a lot of this stuff. Tomorrow is election day. What are you telling your teammates? What are you telling your community as, as you guys approach this? As far as my team, just I'm just telling guys, exercise their rights. You know, it's being in the climate that we are as a country is just huge to if you have the opportunity and you have have the chance to vote, go out there and vote. I would I would never lead someone in a certain direction. I would say, uh, do what you think is right, but just exercise your right to vote in this great country. Thanks, Malik. Our next question will come from Jacob Rayburn with the Cardinal Sports Report. Go ahead, Jacob. Hey, Malik. Uh, hope you're doing well after the Tuesday practice on Monday. And something that Coach Anderson talked about earlier in camp was, or might have been Coach Shaw, I believe Coach Anderson talked about putting a lot of different guys to the nickel position, testing you know, who might play there depending on the situation or the matchup. What have you seen in terms of the guys cycling through there? Has anyone who maybe didn't play that spot last season stood out to you? And in addition to the guys, maybe we haven't had a chance to see there and your thoughts on them. What have you seen from Jonathan who played there a lot last season? Right. I think I think over this training camp period, we did a great job as, a, as an entire secondary just making sure everyone gets a full breadth of knowledge of the playbook. You know, um, we've seen basically every safety go down there and play nickel for us um, this training camp. And that's been great to see, you know, you've had me, Kendall Williamson, um, JJ Parsons, Noah Williams, Jonathan McGill, all get a shot and just, uh, and just see how they can fit down there. So, I'll, so obviously from that, you see that we have a lot of guys that can play that spot, um, which gives, a lot of, gives us a lot of options when, uh, when we, we have to match up guys. And 
wondering if if there's been any conversation or just with yourself um what are the what are the goals for the defensive back unit when not just in the vacuum of, of this season alone but maybe carrying over from last season things that you guys want to uh to to do that that you weren't able to do last year right i think i think what i've been trying to execute not only the back, defensive back room but also to the entire defense uh first effort execution and takeaways um i think as a as a group if we um, use effort and execution together, they can't they can't come alone. Um, we'll be a we'll be a great defense, and we've seen that throughout camp. That when we're hustling to the ball, um, fighting to make plays, and we also executing our job right, we're a really good defense. And also, it's just just taking that ball away this year. I think that's something that we lacked last year. Um, that that I don't want to have on my tape anymore. I know this defense doesn't want to have that on their tape. So we just got to take the ball away when we get those opportunities. A real quick follow up on that. How would you grade that out in uh, camp in terms of takeaways? Uh, I think I think we've created some really good habits. I think guys over the past few weeks have been fighting to punch the ball out, fighting to get strengths, fighting to finish finish on the ball when they have the chance to get an interception. So I think we've been we've been doing great in that aspect. Our next question will come from Scott Reese with Stanford Radio. Go ahead, Scott. You, you read it. Oh, you, he's still muted. Oh, see, I oh, thought Tyler right. was going to unmute me. I got to do the work myself. <laughs> hey, uh, good to see you. So yeah. Paulson Adebo opts out, and any defense loses a guy of that caliber, it's going to impact the whole unit. So I'm just wondering, you know, how does that affect what you've seen, particularly from the corners? And, you know, what is your role in that regard? And as the leader back there, kind of helping promote that next man up mentality. All right. You know, Paulson was a was a great player for us over the past few years. So it's, it's hard to say you're going to replace a guy like that. You know, a guy with All-American type talent, you know, he – he just is, he is going to be a guy we missed back there, but I think him leaving just enhanced our competition at the cornerback position. I think guys came in there and saw opportunity, and it's just the making guys just come to practice and and fight their butts out to bust off to get that spot. So I, I think uh, as my my role in it all has just been pushing guys to to come out every day like you're the starter, come out every day that you want to take the spot, take this role and be a playmaker for us on the back end. So I, I've been excited to see the, the competition at the cornerback position. It's been great for us throughout this whole camp. You, you take pride in seeing some of these guys take your words of wisdom to heart and go out there and get it done? Yeah, I, I, I love seeing that, you know. I, I would never take credit for the for the effort and, and work they put out there, but it definitely feels good when you, when you see those CI young guys out there battling for a spot. Our next question will come from Daniel Martinez Krams with the Stanford Daily. Oregon comes out this week with an or on the quarterback depth chart, but either guy, it's going to be a first year starter in their system. Is that something you look at as an advantage because they might be easier to rattle or a disadvantage because there's less tape on them or something in between? I would say, you know, going into the first game, it's, it's always hard to, to scout guys, you know, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it as an advantage or disadvantage. I think, I think for us personally, as a defensive unit, uh, we're just going to come out there and execute our defense. You know, regardless who we see out there, our main focus is to come out, come out there and and play what's called to the best of our abilities and try to make plays. You know, so it is. It's definitely hard, hard, harder to start, scout guys uh, when you haven't seen much tape on them. But going against any first game, it's hard. It's hard to scout the opposing team. I see no further hands. So thank you, Malik. Uh, we will be joined shortly by senior center Drew Dolman.